So welcome to part two of my how to sail video. If you are just starting out, maybe check out the first video I did a year ago. There'll be a link somewhere. Um, that really covers a very introductory video on how anyone can start sailing. So this is just going to kind of follow up with that and uh, cover maybe the, the kind of problems you might run into after you learn how to tack and jive and stuff. Uh, so to start with, we're going to be covering using the whisker pole and kind of sailing downwind. Right now we're on a broader reach, which means the wind is kind of coming from the back corner of, of our boat. Um, but we really want to sail, say we want to sail more downwind. So if I adjust the course further downwind, what we're going to find, I'm going to grab the tiller, take it off the autopilot, pull our, our wind vane here. Okay, so I'm moving the, the, the boat more dead downwind. So now the wind is going to be coming straight from behind. And now watch what happens to the jib. It just starts to go uh, floppy wants to go over to this side, doesn't know where it wants to be. If I let it move over there, it's going to be flopping around and unhappy. Um, and I'm, everybody's going to run into this once you try to go sail it downwind eventually. Um, so there's a few things we can do about that. Uh, what we're going to do now is we'll, we'll put the, uh, the whisker pole out and uh, that should help help make things better. So let me cut there. Here we are at the front of the boat. I have my whisker pole attached right here uh, and some people will we'll store them on the side of the boat that's also a good spot i have, I have a spare one right there but it's a little harder to, to use it there if it's attached on the front you can just leave it on this track here and it's ready to go I can i can almost do it all with one hand even so we'll be we'll be uh focusing on this jaw down here at the at the bottom that's going to attach to the sheet um at the clue of your jib that back corner there the other end of the pole is of course it's on my boat it's attached to a track so we'll just uh, slide the pole down so we can get a look at that end and get the pole in position. So it just slides down this track. Let's get a close up of, uh, of that end. Do we have it? There it goes. Yep. So it just clips onto the ring there. And you might have a fixed ring on your boat, or you might have a sliding track that's adjustable. Uh, if you have to, if you have to install this ring yourself, just try to put it about the same height as the clue, the back corner of your jib. So that way your pole will be nice and level. That's the ideal height for it. Also, if it's adjustable, just adjust it to that height. I, I'm using this little ring as a little stopper, just so it always falls in the, in the right place for me. But yeah, so, so we're going to aim to attach it to that corner. And if uh, I like to roll the sail up, you could also just loosen up the, the, the sheet and try to just wrangle it. But I find it easier to go back to the cockpit and we can, we can just roll the sail up and take our time. It's a little safer. So we'll, we'll start by easing out the, uh, the jib sheet there. And that will let us roll it in. Alternatively, yeah, you could you could uh, just loose, come back, loosen up the jib sheet, and then go forward and try to try to wrangle it, play your odds with the pole and the jib. <laughs> Sometimes it gets a little sketchy, though. I don't like to do it single-handed like that. I think honestly, it takes about the same time to roll it up. It's so fast. So we're just rolling up, rolling up the sail. There, you can take a look there. I, as you notice, my lifts don't match what I'm saying. I lost the audio. My mic, my mic kind of failed on this clip, but the rest of the video, it works. <laughs> just trying to remember what I said. I think, I, think, I think I'm getting it. Now that I've got the sail rolled up, I can take my time. I can find the, uh, the sheet I want to move it. So if I want to put the, jet, the, the whisker pole on this side, I'll use this sheet. <clears throat> In the other case, you'd put it on this one. So you have it so the jaws are facing up. Just attach it in there. Set your pole up on the mast. And in this case, I need to tighten the... I'm tightening the whisker pole topping lift so the pole is level. Okay. So I do have a line holding the whisker pole up level with the sail. And I also have a line pulling it down and forward. It's kind of tangled up here. There we go. So that way I can just can leave, the sit, leave the pole up here, you know, not trying to hold it in or anything, and it will stay and give me plenty of time to go back to the cockpit and set it up. And I'm just gonna unroll the jib now. All right, you can watch it come out. And now we have the mainsail on one side and the jib on the other side and it's not trying to collapse on us. Yeah, so now we are wing on wing. We've got our main on this side, 
trip on this side. The main can, can, can be let out a little bit more since we are going directly downwind. So I'll left that out here. Just push it way out there. Now, something to think about when you're sailing in this configuration is uh, the danger of a crash jive, which would be the wind gets behind the, the main sail. Maybe you're not steering a perfectly straight course, so the wind shifts and you're on the autopilot and the main will just swing over real quick. Just messes everything up, can break stuff, makes, makes your day a lot more of a nuisance. I'm, I'm keeping an eye on that right now because I'm in a very uh, precarious position here because if that does jive, I'm going in the water. <laughs> but, I, but, I, but I've got pretty good confidence in how the boat's sailing. Um, but, so what we want to do to prevent that, it's called a preventer basically. You're going to have a line going from the back of the boom. So I have one on this side. I've got another one on this side. So the one on the, the side you can't see is one we'll use. So it just attaches at the back of the boom. And we're going to run that line. Where is it? Let me find it. Let me go around and grab it. So this line that goes from the back of the boom is going to, we're going to, you can, there's two, a few places you can do it. Some people just run it around about right here, you know, towards the, the, uh, the shrouds. But I feel like it doesn't, it's not, it's safer to run it all the way forward. So I've actually got a line set up somewhere. Okay, so now I've got this line set up. I just have it with this uh, one line handy. It goes from the front of the boat to the back to a, a cleat so I can adjust it from there. But what I'm going to do is now that it's attached to the boom, I'm going to come back to the cockpit very carefully using both hands. And I've got it set up in this clutch. So watch that line, get, it'll go nice and taut. And now what that's going to do is that's going to prevent that main. It, even if I try to pull it over, it can't, it can't come across. And that's going to give you some more time. If it does kind of do a, a jive, um, it, might, it won't, you know, <laughs> it's, it's going to still get you in a mess, but it's, it's less likely to do a crash jive. Another thing some people do to kind of <clears throat> alleviate the crash jive danger is a boom preventer. Um, so you can look, I mean, not a, um, it's called a, uh, a boom brake. So it's kind of, there's a few different ones. They kind of just attach to the bottom of the boom and then to some point hard, some strong points on the deck, and it will just slow the boom across. Um, you can look those up. I haven't really used one. I think it might be interesting to try one of those out one day, so we'll look into that in the future. Uh, but yeah, now we're in a pretty safe uh, position as long as the, the boat can keep steering by itself downwind. It's pretty comfortable. It can be kind of rolly sailing downwind, of course. So in, in lighter winds, it might make sense to do jives back and forth because the boat will sail faster that way. Sometimes if you go dead, dead downwind, it, it, the boat goes slower. So, uh, but in stronger winds, you just kind of want to go straight towards your destination if, that's, if it's dead downwind. And in stronger winds, usually it's faster just to go straight down, downwind. So a system like this works pretty good. Now, if winds are lighter, uh, we could put up the, our uh, symmetric uh, spinnaker. And I think actually it's going to be a little too strong today, but when, light, when conditions lighten up, we'll, uh, we'll put that out. So now, we are putting our, we want to put the, uh, the, the whisker pull away basically. And with the roller furler, uh, it's pretty easy. I just, I can leave the pole up and roll up the sail without having to go up there. <clears throat> and that will work nicely. We can talk a little bit more about the pole. Um, now the pole is just going to sit there until I go up there. I can take all the time in the world I want. Uh, but if you're going to get a whisker pole, you kind of need to decide how big of a pole you want. And uh, kind of a good starting point is the distance between the, the mast and then the, the front, the head sail. If you take that distance, you can add a few feet. You can get, sometimes you can go even longer. Uh, so you kind of experiment with it, but that's a good starting point. Take the pole down. The way I have it set up here, I ease the uh, topping lift, so that lowers it a little bit, and then I just pull it up the track. And then, can real easily just pull it in without having to like hang my arms out or nothing. So one other adjustment I have on the pole is,
I've, sometimes I'll have the, the pole will start rubbing on these shrouds and it will saw right through a pole real quick. So I have this line in the front. It kind of does two things. It will hold, when you're using the spinnaker, it keeps the pole from shooting up in the air. But it also, when you tighten it up, it will keep the pole from rubbing against the, the shrouds there. So you really don't want them to rub against the shrouds. Some, some poles will have like chafe guards and stuff on them. But so definitely kind of be wary of that. You can also just kind of furl up the head sail a little bit and that will help to uh, pull the, get the pole away from the shrouds here. But I just stow it on the front here. I've got a little shackle I attach it to. And that works good for me. It doesn't rattle against the mast or anything. And it's always ready to go. Okay, okay so I want to show what's going to happen when the, the boom jives when we have the preventer out. So I'm, I'm steering it across to make it jive so you can focus on the boom now and see what happens. Got that preventer nice and tight. Yeah, here it goes. So watch the head when it happens. This can actually, let's see what happens. Okay, so now you see the boom didn't come across. Yeah. But there's a lot of force on this preventer. Yeah. You can really feel it struggling. Um, in some cases, you're just gonna have to like release it and let it come across, but at least I can control it with this. Um, if you can, try to come back to the tiller and get it, the, the, the wind on the right side of the boat. So I think we'll, we'll be able to do that in these conditions. Yeah. I'll let the jib come over. So yeah, even if you do have a preventer and you do it, it tries to do, like, jive across, you can still, stuff can still break. You, your, your boom can snap uh, in strong winds if that happens. So if you notice it, you need to come out here real quick and deal with it basically. So now I'd like to talk about the concept of weather helm and lee helm and uh, center of effort because I think that can really kind of help us peer into why our boat is sailing the way it is and uh, give us ideas for how we can fix it when things aren't working well. So the idea of weather helm and lee helm. So weather is like the windward side of the boat, like to weather, and lee is the downwind side, right? So basically that, what that is, is when you're sailing your boat, there's going to become like a, there's like a force, a resistance that the tiller has. And it's gonna, it's a, it, a lot of times, usually it will have what's called a weather helm. So the tiller will be trying to fight me. So it has a, I feel a pull, and I'm actually using a, a fair amount of effort to uh, actually keep the boat on course. And that's called a weather helm. If it was doing the opposite, if, it was, if you were having to push, that would be a lee helm. So basically, what the boat is trying to do is trying to sail up to, wet, to windward, right? And I'm having to fight it to keep it downwind. And the reason for that is usually to do with the, the balance of the sails. And so your mainsail, since that's kind of in the back of the boat, you can imagine that it, the boat being kind of on a lever. So if the wind is hitting the, the mainsail, that's trying to push the boat into the wind. So that's creating that weather helm that you're feeling as a resistance in the tiller. Now your jib is kind of doing the opposite and it's trying to pull you down to leeward, right? Because that's, if the boat is a lever, like the keel is our point of leverage, our pivot point and the sails are trying to either pivot you upwind or downwind. And so if there's too much weather helm, that, a lot of times that might mean your main is trimmed too tight. You're getting too much power out of that main. And so something you can do is you can alleviate, you can let that main sail out. So in this boat, I would let the traveler or the, or the main sheet out and let that, 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 that boom just swing out. So now your main is not getting as much power and your sails are more balanced and you're not gonna have to be fighting that, that weather helm all the time. And as the wind picks up, uh, your weather helm increases. Now, another thing that's gonna increase your weather helm is the boat isn't just like a pivot point like this, it's also pivoting like this. Now, if you imagine your boat healed as the wind picks up, right? There's the, your, the, the, the center of effort is, is not, not aligned in the middle of the boat. Now your center of effort is moving out here, that's where your sails are. So now you, the wind is trying to pivot you upwind. And this has an even more dramatic effect than the balance of the jib and the main. So you can, you can trim out a little weather helm, lee helm um, with balancing the mitt, like, you know, putting a little bit more jib out or less jib. You can also reef the main, make the main smaller, uh, and that will help kind of, uh, you know, reduce its, the weather helm. So that's another thing to do when, once the wind is picking up. That will also, if you reef, if you make their sails smaller, you got more sail up, you're not going to heal as far over. So once you're healing pretty far over, you're, a lot of times you're going to be fighting that tiller and you're going to have a hard time steering your boat and it's going to be like, wanting to zigzag and wait, and it, but you can alleviate that by making your mainsail smaller. Um, a lot of times you also make the jib smaller at the same time and you have less healing motion and now your boat will just be sailing so much more comfortably 
And a lot of times it'll sail faster too, because now the boat is going through the water like it's meant to, you know, maybe 10 degrees, 10 to 20 degrees at most of heel, go faster, more comfortable. Uh, so that's a, that's a really important concept, you know. Uh, when you're sailing downwind, it becomes super apparent that the center of effort moving back and forth. Because when you go downwind, you're fighting, you'll be fighting the tiller wants to pull this way and it wants to pull this way. And what's happening is the boat is rocking back and forth, you know, because you're not heeled over. The wind isn't, isn't pushing you on one side. You're going down when your sails are all the way out like this. And uh, so the boat's just going to rock in the waves. And as the boat rocks this way, now the wind is pushing it and it's trying to turn you this way. Now the boat rocks this way and now it's pushing you this way and you're going to feel that and you're going to be fighting that. Uh, not much you can do to prevent the boat from rolling too much. I mean, uh, maybe if you have way too much sail up, you know, it's, it, you're, you, you're going to have a little bit of trouble. So maybe you can put a little bit of sail away. Um, but usually you want to go fast. So you want as much sail as you can. Um, but yeah, if it gets too much, lowering, re reducing the amount of sail by putting some reefs in, curling the jib up a little bit. Uh, usually like getting the main sail under control first is that's going to cause you more issues with the weather helm. Um, so that, I think that might help uh, if you can kind of wrap your heads around those concepts. I, I, I don't understand it completely myself. I'm always learning new things, but uh, once I kind of start applying those things, you can, you can come up with solutions on your own. If you understand the problem, uh, you can think about starting to reduce the sail or, you know, trimming them out, uh, things like that. Okay, so now that we've got our boom way out, we're going downwind, you know, jib's doing something, maybe it's pulled out, maybe it's not. Um, we kind of, we start to run into the problem sometimes of the, the boom starting to lift. And uh, normally, like when, we're, when we have it sheeted in, you know, we can, it's, we're, the, the main sheet is pulling the boom down, so we have our, we can adjust our shape of our sail, you know, by loosening or tightening the, uh, the main sheet. But once the boom comes all the way out, we can't, we can't pull it down with the main sheet because that's going to pull it in too. So the way we can control the sail when it's all the way out is with this little guy here. Some boats will have them. You can add it if it doesn't. It's a boom vang. I think some people call them a kicker too. Uh, they can be, I mean, usually it's just a block and tackle system, but sometimes they have like rigid hydraulic things. Haven't used one of those too much. But basically that will do the same thing as your main sheet was doing when you were sheeted in and it pulls the, pulls the boom down and that will kind of adjust the shape I'm not the best person to tell you about all the different ways you can adjust the shape of the sail, but that's another thing to think about when you're, you know, trying to tweak the sails and get the boat sailing just how you want. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, but remember to, to let it out um, when, cause later because it makes it really hard to get your sail all the way up when it's tight, tightened in. Okay, so now the wind's picking up, so we're gonna jive the boat. What we don't want to happen is for this boom to come over really quick so, and just break something. Uh, so we're going to try to do a controlled jibe. It's a good idea as the wind picks up or just any time really. Uh, so as I'm turning the boat downwind, I'm using my leg to, do, to steer the boat. Okay, I'm keeping an eye on what's going on. Okay, so I'm going to be pulling in the, the, the main sheet. So I'm bringing the main to the center of the boat. And then I'm even going to use a traveler to kind of help it over. And now, this just, now when it comes across, it will still kind of fling a little bit. But it's much more controlled that way because it didn't have so far to move. And now I can go ahead and let it out how I want. Now, let's see. Should I have the jib on this side? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, I'm moving the jib over now. Getting the full jive here. Okay. Yeah, so usually going down one, I can just do this without a winch handle. Okay. Why don't you go ahead and do a stop and start again, just so I can. And, yeah. Step. Okay. So now I'm going to talk about reefing the mainsail, which can be uh, uh, something people makes people a little nervous. Maybe that the reefing comes about when you want to make the sail smaller, usually because you are uh, the wind's picking up a little too too much. Uh, so this is how I do it on my boat. There's several different systems. This is probably the most simple and easiest to set up on a boat. Uh, it's, it's done from, I do it from the, uh, the, the mast, so I have to walk forward every time. It's not really a bad way to go because it, it's, the, it's the simplest system, there's less stuff to break and there's less friction in the system. A lot of times when you have these systems when the reefing is all led back here, you might have to go forward to the mast anyway to clear up a, a jam or something. Uh, so this just kind of makes it less trips back and forth if that, if that were to happen. Okay, so the reef to sail, right now I'm kind of pointing the boat 
up a little bit into the wind. This could be kind of sketchy if the wind is uh, really strong. In that case, you might want to heave too. Uh, or just try to reef just going downwind. Okay, reefing the mainsail. First thing I'm doing is I'm kind of uh, uncoiling my main halyard because uh, we need to ease the, ease, ease the main halyard down to let the sail down. If it's coiled up, you know, the sail won't, won't draft. Okay, so I've got a few point, reef points on the sail. There's one right here. And then there's one a little higher, those, those little uh, metal rings, basically. I'm gonna open up the sail pack so I can see what I'm, what's going on here. And then I'm just gonna pull the sail down. We'll just do the first reef point here. Basically, you could start with, with this reef. If it was really windy, I'd go straight to the, the second one. So I lower this, the sail enough that I can attach this uh, somewhere. Some boats will have a hook that you attach it to. I don't have that, so I just have this uh, rope with a carabiner on it, basically. So the way I have it, yeah, I'm just trying to reattach the bottom reef kringle to something, you know, that's fixed. So now that this is attached, I can go ahead and uh, tighten up the main halyard again. And if it's really windy, a lot of times you have to use a winch to get that nice and tight. Got the, uh, the first reef in there at this point. Now I'm I tighten up the main halyard so it's nice and tight. Next, I need to do a tighten up the back corner of the sail. And the way that's led, it's, it's a line going from the boom through that um, little metal kringle back to the to a block on the boom, and then it comes to here. So that would be this guy. So as I pull this guy in, you'll see that will snug up. And then lift the boom up. Over here. Off. You can have a little winch here that can help me if I need to, uh, but we don't need that today. I put these little pockets here in my sail bag. It makes it easy to, just to keep these lines organized. Do the same thing with my main tire. And now we've got a, a main sail that's much smaller, easier to manage. We'll have less weather helm. Also, it makes it easier for an autopilot or wind vane to steer. Um, if you're having trouble with your autopilot, just reefing the main can make a drastic improvement sometimes. So when my sail is reefed, you may notice the, the sail just fell, the, the excess sail at the bottom just fell into the bag and that kind of manages it. Um, if you don't have one of these sail packs that stays attached to the boom, well, first of all, I highly recommend them, although they are kind of expensive. They're not that difficult to make yourself though. But if you don't have one, uh, the more traditional way is there are these uh, little points, these little grommets one and uh, two and they will have little ropes hanging from them normally you can just bundle up the excess sail and tie it up with the, the ropes hanging from your from your reef points but do not tighten that rope you need we need to leave them kind of loose because the those points are not reinforced to hold the loads of the sail only the corners can take the loads of the sail um, those middle points are just for bundling up that excess uh, sail area and up to the gale conditions, the bag holds it really good. Above that, even, it, the sail can sometimes get a, little, get a little out of control. So maybe even if you are, you know, reefed down um, in, a, in a storm, you might think about even kind of tying up some of the, the sail in the bag there. But usually I don't have to do that. The bag just catches it and it makes, it makes uh, reefing one, one, a little bit one, that much easier. Uh, one last thing to show the, in, uh, if you're having trouble on the boat, something that breaks, you just need to like re reset. Uh, or you're getting into some gnarly weather and you're in trouble. The easiest uh, thing to do is just heave two. So what I'm doing is I'm just moving the tiller over and I'm letting the boat, uh, well, in this case, I'm running to a oh. <laughs> It's probably safer to do a tack. But basically, we just left the wind back, the, the jib back wind. And now we can take the tiller and we can lash it all the way over to one side because the boat is unable jib back with it like this. So you can see that the jib is it's on the wrong side of the boat. And things just kind of calm down on the boat, you know? Like the sails aren't going to be flapping. Uh, the, the boat speed slows down. What's happening is we're kind of slowly drifting backwards into our own uh, weight, basically. So there's a kind of a, we've, our boat is blocking the, the waves right here. So it's a little bit calmer over here, and, but we're drifting into that water instead of pounding into the waves. Uh, this is also a good option. Possible reef like this if you, uh, if you didn't reef early enough, you know, the wind's got a little out of control, you're a little afraid to do it. You can just heave too, 
and uh, you can lower the sails and make it uh, more manageable. Okay. Maybe another way to explain the heat the hope two position is your main sail is trying to push you forward, but your jib is kind of trying to push you backwards. So even though it's pointing this way, we're actually kind of drifting, you know, just we're not moving forward really much. We're just kind of slowly drifting that direction. Uh, it can be a great strategy also if like you're going to get to port too early, it's too dark. Uh, you want to come, or your you know customs isn't open yet, or you know you want to delay your, your trip a little bit. Uh, you can just heave two offshore, and then you'll you'll slowly drift and maybe a knot, maybe two knots depending on the winds. So you can kind of help you time your uh, your trips that way, so you can come in when you when you want to. Go. Thanks for watching. I hope uh, you could get something out of uh, my attempts at explaining uh, these concepts. Um, if anybody else uh, can explain it better, or if I missed something, please leave it below in the comments. Or also, if uh, if I want to do a part three, if uh, anybody uh, has a request, leave that in the comment below. Maybe in a year from now, I'll do <laughs> part part three also. And uh, if you got something out of the video and uh, or saved hundreds of dollars from taking sailing lessons and want to make me a contribution, there's uh, links in the description for how you can do that also.